Hello, my lovely friends. My name is Ava, and here are some marriage of convenience romances. I love a good marriage of convenience trope. It works so well for like angst and tension and forced proximity. All of my favorite, all of my favorite things. Like always, if I have more recommendations with this trope, I will leave them linked down below. Go check them out if you want even more recommendations. But here are 10 more recommendations for you. First one that I have is Isn't It Romantic by Alyssa K. Adams. This is book number four, I think, in her Bromance Book Club series. I've only read book number one and this one. I didn't read books two or three, so I feel like you could definitely jump around in this series. This book is about Vlad, who is a Russian on an American hockey team, and he's been living in the States for a few years, and he actually is married. He's married to his like childhood best friend, Elena. They grew up in Russia together and she really wanted to go to the United States to go to school. And so they just get married for convenience purposes because he's in the States for sports. Like he's on a, on a sports team. And so I get, think he gets like a certain visa for that. And so she really wants to go to school. So they have not seen each other in a long while, but he's in this bromance book club where like men read romance books and they try and like help each other out in their love lives. And through him being a part of this club, he's realizing, I think I want more out of this relationship than just convenience. I think I want to actually like get to know my wife and have like a real marriage with her. But then this book starts out with Elena coming to see him and asking for a divorce because she thinks that like he is not into her at all and she's been having this unrequited crush on him for a long time but she could not be farther from the truth and then things get a little bit even more complicated when vlad gets injured on the ice and elena is the only one to help take care of him when he is injured and he can't really move around um, so there's a forced proximity because they have to live together she's taking care of him um so the marriage of convenience kind of happened like in the past but the ramifications of it take place in the present our hero of the story is kind of like I think he's kind of like a mafia leader or like a very powerful man. Anyway, he is putting in an arranged marriage with this uh, like other boss man's daughter. But once he gets a glimpse of that daughter's sister dancing, all bets are off. He's like, no, she's going to be mine. He kind of like finagles his way to make the heroine his instead. So it's kind of like arranged marriage, but the arranged marriage is with her sister. And he makes it become a marriage of convenience with our heroine. This man was absolutely obsessed with the heroin which i always love it has bipolar representation here it really talks about therapy and living with a condition you are not able to see and also how to be someone's loved one with a condition you cannot see as well like how does the heroin um navigate that and help her partner next i have the co-op by tara dewitt this one is really funny i really like this one um so our two main characters don't really get along okay they had this little tryst I think when they were in high school over the summer, they had like a summer fling with each other and it did not end well, did not end well. Um, but their grandmothers were best friends. Both of them recently passed away and in their respective wills, they bequeathed their part of kind of like their duplex that they shared to their respective grandchildren. So the heroine and the hero. So they kind of own this very rundown duplex and they're like, I don't know what to do with it. Um, but they can't really own it, own it yet and earn their inheritance until they get married to each other. So they have to get married to each other in order to get this inheritance, the house, the money. They want the money to redo the house and then sell it for a higher profit, obviously. And in the meantime, they have nowhere else to stay. So both of them are living in this rundown duplex together. So forced proximity, they have to get married. <laughs> and yeah, it's really fun. I love the bigger bantering, like enemies, like hate to love, angsty, parts of this book. It's so fun. Next I have Sweetest in the Gale by Olivia Dade. This is actually a bind up of three of Olivia Dade's novellas. So the one that I'm specifically talking about that has a marriage of convenience trope is Cover Me. That's the last book or short story in this collection. The two main characters in this book have been best friends since college and they've always been there for each other. But then the heroine thinks she might have cancer, but she can't get a lot of the testing done because she doesn't have insurance. So the hero swoops in and is like, how about we just get married? You can be on my insurance plan. It'll be that easy. And through their marriage of convenience and them getting married, they like admit that they have always had feelings for each other. It's a really cute and sweet and sometimes emotional romance um, because the heroine is going through a possible cancer diagnosis in here. So just please be aware of that. But I feel like it's really worth it. You have plus size representation with both characters. The heroine loves baking. 
I really love this short story. I wish it was a longer book because I just wanted more of it. For a historical, I have When the Earl Met His Match by Stacey Reed. The hero is really needing a wife, so the only thing he can think of to find a wife is to put an ad in a newspaper, and he has all these qualifications for what he thinks a good wife is or should be and they're kind of very outrageous and the heroine finds this ad in the newspaper and decides to write back saying like your dream lady does not <laughs> exist like these are too many qualifications they kind of become friends via letters bickering and bantering it's actually really cute but then the heroine gets in a little bit of a pickle she had a rendezvous with a guy who seduced her basically lied to her and she's now pregnant and she winds up on our hero's doorstep and is like i'm pregnant and I need your help. And so he marries her in order to save her reputation. And he also, he needs a wife anyway. So he's gonna take our heroine and marry her and then also raise this baby as his own. I love this hero. He is so stinking sweet. There is speechless representation. The hero is not able to speak. And I also love his father. His father in here, 10 out of 10, I love him. Like one of the best like book dads ever. For another historical, I have The Taming of a Highlander by Lisa Braden. So you got to read about, this is book number two, by the way, in a series. Um, but you got to read about in book number one, this hero was falsely imprisoned for something he did not do. And while he was in prison, he ended up getting beaten up like really badly to a point where he's not able to see out of one of his eyes anymore. He's covered in scars and like, he's not doing well mentally also, not doing well. One of the men who was responsible for imprisoning him is out one day and the hero finds him basically drags him into the woods and beats him almost to a bloody pulp like he is so mad at him because this man is responsible for all of his misfortune the heroine just so happens to be walking by and witnesses this and almost witnesses him killing this man and is like oh my gosh and the hero notices her and for a split second that guy he's beating up runs away and he's like oh my gosh this guy's gonna tell everyone what i did Ugh. And the only person who was a witness to this is this heroine. And so in order to make sure she don't testify against him in court or something, they get married. <laughs> um, it's actually really good. I know that sounded really bonkers, um, but it's actually a really good romance. I love this one. It's my favorite book in the series for sure. You know, like a tortured, damaged hero and like kind of like a softer, innocent heroine, which I love that combo. Next is Marion Haste by Anne Gracie. This is the first book in her Marriage of Convenience series. So like a lot of the books in the series are Marriage of Convenience. Our hero of the story ends up inheriting a title. His brother passed away and he's the next heir to, I think like an earldom possibly, or like a, a thing with the title, right? He ends up getting custody of his two younger sisters who are in their teens and his brother's daughter. Um, so they're all around the same age she ends up getting custody of them and he does not know what to do with these women so he needs a wife so he comes across her heroine who is a school teacher at the school the boarding school that um his sisters used to go to and he's realizing that she's the only person that they actually like listen to like they don't listen to him they sneak out all the time like they don't care what he says but when she says something they listen they care and he's like oh my gosh is this woman gonna be the one that can make my sister is like, get in line. Like, I need to marry her. Like, please. It takes a lot of convincing, but that's just what happens. And it's actually really fun. These like young women are actually really funny. I love their romances as well. They get their own romances too. And this book was really sweet. I love seeing our hero just become completely smitten for this school teacher. Next is Tempt Me at Twilight by Lisa Klippas. This is, I think, book number three in her Hathaway series. This series centers around the Hathaway family, like a the family of the Hathaways and in a previous book in the series their family home got burned down and so they've been living in this hotel it's the hotel that Harry Rutledge owns and anyway the heroine of the story is one of the sisters in the Hathaway family and she's been catching trying to catch one of her sister's runaway pets her sister has a lot of pets she's trying to chase one of them down they've escaped and she bumps into a man she is kind of interested in, but she is adamant that she is in love with this man that she knew when she was a child. Okay, she's like in love with him. She's like, oh my gosh, she's gonna marry me, whatever. Um, and when the guy she bumps into, hears all this, he's like, oh no, 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 no. This one is gonna be mine. She is going to be mine. That happens to be Harry Rutledge, the owner of the hotel, and he is completely smitten with our heroine and is adamant that she is going to be his wife. So what does he do? He sabotages her relationship and basically ruins her to a point where <laughs> She has to marry him. Okay, it sounds messy, I know, but he's like, he's good. You gotta read it to figure it out. He's good. He's solid, he's good, okay? <laughs> A very beloved one is The Viscount Who Loved Me by Julia Quinn. This is the second book in the Bridgerton series. Like season two of Bridgerton is inspired by this book. This one is about Anthony and Kate and Anthony is adamant on finding a wife his viscountess but does not want to be in love because he has some daddy issues daddy trauma okay does not want to fall in love with his wife because what if one of them dies they will be utterly heartbroken whatever he is not into loving his wife okay but then he 
finds Kate. Well, first he finds her sister and she's kind of like the diamond of the season that season. Um, but then he gets into like this animosity relationship with her older sister, Kate. They get on each other's nerves, get under each other's skin. And there comes a scene in this book where um, the heroine gets stung by a bee when they're fighting. Um, and he basically sucks the venom out because his dad actually died from a bee sting. Um, and yeah, he sucks the venom out and she gets ruined because people see him sucking this venom out of like her neck, her shoulder, whatever. And they think like they're doing something they shouldn't be. And so she's ruined now. And the only way to solve this problem is to marry her. It is different from the show, just letting you know. But this is probably my second favorite in the Bridgerton series. And the last one that I have to mention is an alien romance. This is I Married Anaga by Regine Abel. This is the second book in her um, Prime Mating Agency series. You don't have to read these in order. They don't have anything to do with each other. Basically, um, in this book, our heroine is a human and she is sent to this planet where there are an overpopulation of a certain species of animal. And this planet has allowed her and a few other people to hunt and basically knock out some of that population of the animal. But they can only hunt the animal in a certain area of land that is blocked off. And if they go over that boundary, um, they will be in huge trouble, like maybe even killed. So the heroine is making sure not to do that. But then she notices one of these animals is like really dangerous and is attacking one of the native people to the planet, like one of these um, like Naga creatures like a child and she decides to save the child's life she goes over that boundary she gets in trouble for it but she ends up saving the child's life and because she saved the child's life she's not going to be killed but she broke the rules so she needs a different punishment and her punishment is to marry our hero who is the like ruler of a naga village okay um and yeah it's a marriage of convenience because like someone has to marry her and the hero steps up to the plate he becomes totally obsessed with her and i love him you wouldn't think that you'd fall in love with an auger creature but this man is very very <laughs> Anyways, there you have it. Those are some romances with the marriage of convenience trope. Let me know down below if you've read any of these or if you plan to. And if you don't feel like commenting anything else, you can leave me a wedding emoji of some kind in the comment section down below. But anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.